be just laughing at him, saying, sit up, get your head up. And he's going, no, believe me, it's going to go massive around here. It's going to go massive. Some of us were just resting, and I was in me, like, uh, me boxies, and I just started walking over to get me, uh, me pants off the washing line, and then it sounded like a, uh, like a twig snapping. I had time to think, this can't be happening, and I shouted, grenade! Everyone just gone, fuck, and everyone ran. Fucking hell, what was that? No. Oh, shot wouldn't even be the word. I couldn't believe somebody would be cheeky enough to even try and come that close. We've never seen that coming. None of us seen that coming. Hey! He's down there! Boss, on the side of this wall! On the side of this wall! Yeah! The Taliban were ten metres away behind a wall. Mr. Griffiths between commander, he jumped on the wall and he was saying if they're throwing them, fucking throw them back. So he started getting all the lads grenades and started throwing them back. So it was a grenade fight then. You could hear him screaming down at the bottom saying, bring me another fucking grenade. With a grenade fight raging, Lieutenant Miller was trying to see the enemy from his compound. One of Miller's men had spotted flashes from enemy guns. That's the direction the fire is coming from. He's seeing movement, so it's time to suppress it. With his attention on the firefight, Lieutenant Miller didn't see the enemy creeping around his blind side. They were good. They'd seen where we were exposed from, and at the same time that we realised it, they were attacking us from it. Just like a cat and mouse sort of thing. They do shot him, we do shot him to like to count it. That's just smart, That's smart as fuck. They were more determined, more tenacious than we were used to, um, older than we were used to. Waves of Taliban fighters were now joining the fight. All we could see was minibuses full of men, motorbikes, more motorbikes. It was insurgents reinforcing from the south to the north and pretty much surrounding the company. In their compound, Griffiths and Wilson were struggling to hold the Taliban back. They were looking for a, a way to get in to one of the compounds and get involved in hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat with the guys. And that becomes quite a desperate situation because that can be quite an even fight when it's that close uh, and we don't want to have an even fight with them.
the one thing that was strange about the day was almost surreally, it just stopped for two hours. Um, and yes, we, I remember on ICOM and, and I remember people laughing um, when they said they were going for lunch. I'd gone off the roof because we'd had a low for about 45 minutes where nothing had happened, so we thought, like, that's it now, probably, that'll be it for the day. So we'd suck the lads off the roof, get some water down them. Walking up. About 15 minutes later, as we was walking on, we just had a massive, massive burst of incoming small arms again. One of the lads shout man down and then me heart just sunk. And you had been hit. Um, how badly I didn't know. Picked me home up, got up onto the roof, and Mikey will always lying behind one of the sandbags. It felt like my head was gonna explode. Uh, yeah, I started shaking and everything. We got him back into the compound. Um I like into like a bit of safety. Mikey Wilson, nicknamed Willow, was one of Arnhem Company's most experienced soldiers. 